to Otaku no Cooking, where today we are making nikumaki for the very first time. I'm just going to try this. Nikumaki is basically vegetables wrapped in like prosciutto or thinly sliced pork or bacon. We're going to use bacon. And then pan fried in teriyaki sauce. I don't know about you, but I'm drooling already. So first off, we're going to need to prepare the vegetables. Typically, you're going to have... Um, carrot sticks, asparagus stalks, and string beans cut in pieces. Um, but for this, I don't, I hate asparagus. So I'm just going to use the carrots and beans. We're going to prep those. So let me just grab a board and we will start prepping these. I also need a knife. And I need a vegetable peeler. One second, I forgot uh, to pull that out before we began. I have down here in my drawer, near the bottom, I'm sure. There it is. Okay. So, here we got some, some bacon that we're going to use here for this. We've got bacon, uh, which means normally they're four inches, which is pretty wide. Um, I'm wondering if, because um, the problem here is that they're supposed to be kind of wide, and then you cut them. So we're going to end up with, um, I'll just make them short. So let me go ahead, and I just have a, a carrot here, which I'm going to cut the sticks. So we'll start by just peeling the carrot, and then I will cut that into strips. Should be fine. Then we'll, we'll cook these, just in the microwave, just... Um, like, covered bowl in the microwave, and then I think, yeah, you zap it, zap it for like one minute, should be fine. Uh, so, boom. So I need basically bacon-sized pieces. The one about there. Nice carrot. And we'll cut off the end. Nothing good can come of that. Uh, so I need some pieces here, so I'm going to cut this in half. Now they say, they don't say how thick to make the pieces, but I'm assuming we're going to need them pretty thick. I'm just going to cut these, and we'll, I'm not going to need all of these, because these are pretty big. Um, so I'm just cut these in pieces, I'll probably do that into thirds. We'll just do a couple of these to get a sense of what we're doing. Uh, this I can probably do in, well, there. And then can I cut those? We'll try to cut those in further pieces. Probably easier if I do this, like this, and this, like this, and then, well, yeah. Alright, that's a fair number of those. And then those in full. Pardon. I'll do one more. Just to be kind of crazy. So I'm just cutting this in half and then cutting that into further pieces. Other way. Nothing too crazy here. All right, so we've got our carrot sticks. And like I said, the rest of these will go to the side for now. Clean countertops, by the way. Uh, then we need the, the beans. I'm going to rinse those beans and then cut them up. So we're just going to make sure they get nice and rinsed off. And the, uh, and there, we'll cut these in half. It's already cut in half. Okay. So just rubbing these of any uh, anything. They should have been cleaned in the store, but just in case there's anything remaining on them, I'll go ahead and cut those down. I also have a pan over here that we'll be uh, doing this in. So once we have these cooked, 
Um, we'll roll these up and then make our teriyaki sauce. It's basically teriyaki sauce plus some sugar, which I ain't complaining about. Sweetened teriyaki sauce. And this is going to be quite the recipe. Hey, Blue. Yep. We, uh, we're just digging into a taco cooking. All right, so, ooh, there's some brown there. I don't like brown. So, cut that off. Good chance to check your veggies, make sure they're good. These are actually a little longer than those carrots. That's pretty long for a, oh, actually, I need to cut the tips off. That's important. Okay. Don't want the tips. The tips are, um, I mean, if you're just eating them raw, that's fine. Or something like this, you want it a little more. Uh, wrong, wrong about. Well, he's, well, he's a little, little better cut. A little more elegant, elegant vegetables for a more civilized age. And, uh, I got kind of a lot of these beans. We may not use all of them. Just, some, and yeah, that's a lot, so I think that'll be, that'll be enough. Very long, right? I'm going to do this in thirds. So here are our carrots and beans, and we're just going to cover these in, um, I'm going to just use a paper towel, and cook these for one minute. Meanwhile, so these will go off to the side. Again, we have a, we'll have a place for them later. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put them in a container and put them back in the fridge. Flat. So I will do more of those later, but for now. Okay. Now we need to work on the on rolling these in, in that way. So we'll move that out of the way and get a new uh, cutting board because we're going to now move on to raw meat. So importantly, let's need a toothpick. Let me grab my toothpicks. So we're basically going to roll, put out some ham, or bacon rather, roll some vegetables in it, and then stick a toothpick into that. And then we're going to pan fry this. In fact, let me go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, I'm going to. Do we need. Yeah, sausage, sugar, fried meat, salt, and meat. That's saying just pan fry them without any oil. Oh, yeah, that's saying just pan fry them without any oil. That's surprising. Let me double check here. Um, all right. I'm, gonna, um, I'm just starting up the. Uh, uh, range on low. So, our veggies are cooked. They're pretty hot. Quite hot, in fact. Good. So now let's get into this package. Now we're going to move into the raw meat zone. So basically, once I get started on this, I'm going to do all the, do everything I need to do here, and then move my hands off. I think, a long, thin slice of pork. Alright, so I think this is going to make sense. I don't, don't need to uh, cut the pork or the bacon, any smaller. I'm going to drain that a little bit, make sure. Okay, good. There's no, no issues there. Come on. So opening both. Okay, there we are. All right. So I have now contaminated my fingers with raw meat. All right. This comes out loud. This is very fatty bacon. This is going to shrink like crazy, which is what kind of worries me. Um, but we'll see what happens. So now we take the vegetables, and we'll do, what are we looking at? We're going to do three each. And then just wrap that like this. See how this works. All right, and then, whoops. 
take out some toothpicks without touching the container. And then we will remove some mud. There we go. Alright, so there's our first nikumaki. Simply ham and vegetables. Number one, let's do a few more of these. My pan's starting to heat up. We're going to cook this over medium heat, so about 50% on your uh, range, whether that's you know, 3 out of 6, or 4 out of 8, or 5 out of 10. Different ranges have just different... Uh, Different, different ranges of the dials. So whatever is half, that's what they're cooking. They say, they claim here. All right, I'm going to try to go a little more uh, more careful here, and make sure that this is nice and even. So you see, we have vegetables on this side, vegetables on this side. Nothing sticking out. Like a toothpick. Skewer through. Don't skewer through anything on the other side. All right. You want. By the way, not particularly healthy. So according to this, each meat roll is going to be about 740 calories, which is a lot. 740 calories. But you get a little bit of carrot and uh, stuff in there, so that, that's not that, that's good, right? Like, come on. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll do maybe six of these. Let's see. Again. Try to make this nice. And again, this, this bacon is going to shrink as it cooks. So, note, I am getting raw meat all over these, uh, these skewers. So, do not use them for anything else. Doesn't want to, but I'm going to make it happen. There we are. Okay. And we'll continue this. Once this is done, we will mix the teriyaki sauce with some sugar. And uh, put these in the pan and then pour the, that sugar teriyaki sauce over this. That will become... I may even have to waste some vegetables here. hate to do that. But sometimes that's life. We'll see. Perhaps I will just use up all of these in our Nikumaki. Nikumaki. All right. Here's through. Here's the heavens. And right. yeah, maybe I'll just go ahead and. I have another maybe three more with what's in here, three or four. Maybe we'll just we'll just make use of everything we have. So there's three of those, three of those. I could also make a bigger nikumaki. Let's just go crazy. No, this needs to be even, right? Like you don't want to make some of these much bigger than the others because then they won't cook as quickly. You got something with, with much more mass than something else. And it's just not going to cook, so or not going to cook through as quickly. So you're you're messing with multiple different foods. Just not not a good idea. Um, different different cook times, not worth it. All right. So yeah, we'll do probably two more here. Maybe we'll use a little more on this one or one of them. We'll, we'll do this one by the book. Oh, you know what? So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, I think we'll do this one and two more, and that should finish it up. Cool. We're gonna still don't know exactly what we're gonna get here in terms of once this bacon cooks up, but we'll find out. That's part of the experimentation process. And ironically, it looks like we're gonna get basically exactly as many toothpicks as these. Nikumaki. The rest of the bacon I will just have to throw away. I mean, I'm, there's no way I, I'll just cook and eat that, right? Mm. Yeah, 
right. Okay, so this goes here, wraps around here. I'm going to make sure that that is uh, even. Vegetables. Yeah, good. I have enough for one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Eight you come up. Now, again, the problem here is this is a lot of calories, but that is life. Okay. I'm just going to use the rest of these in here. And there's a little more carrots than the other ones, but they're smaller, so it'll work out. Wrap that up. And now we start on the menu button. Note to self, when you actually do this video, Brent, make sure that you speed all this up. All right. So these are hands full of raw meat juice. They get clean now. Before I touch anything else, lots of soap and water. Then I'm going to, so I've had the, the pan on low, just to start it heating up. I'm gonna increase it to medium. I can use some more soap there. As I get the, uh, the rest of it going, the, uh, the, the sauce. In fact, I think I can, I'll reuse this for the sauce. It just has some vegetable stuff in there. That's fine. A little vegetable juice isn't going to hurt the sauce. So they're recommending a half cup of teriyaki sauce. Um, I'm not sure how many of this we, it makes. A pound of pork. How much is this? This is, so we've got maybe half a pound here. All right, so we need a quarter of a cup of teriyaki sauce. Um, I happen to have, there's a quarter of a cup. that heat. We'll move over to the other uh, side so you can see that here in a minute. My teriyaki sauce I forgot to open. I'm going to do that. This is exciting television. Exciting stuff. You can see me open a bottle of teriyaki sauce. Okay. Might as well just, oh, just shake that up. No point in half measures here. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is going to be. Yep. The little cap thing is all ah, like glued on with super glue. There it comes. Man, it makes yeah, that's, yeah, this is exciting. Uh, let's go ahead and pour that in to the bowl. And then we will add a tablespoon of sugar. Mm. Uh, and I might, no, I've got a, I've got a thing. For that we will add one tablespoon of sugar. We'll glaze it quite nicely, should. Of course, teriyaki sauce can be used for lots of other things, for meats and stuff. Well, we are using it for meat, huh? Okay. So now, we can transition over to the pan. So there's our pan. Here is our, you know, are our Things there. Uh, do we need to drain? It does not say. So we're going to just grab a plate and put it over on the side. We'll put it on the range top for now. That's fine. So I'm going to. So that's that's uh, okay. Um, cook until the meat becomes glazed with the sauce. This is called teriyaki sauce. All right. So again, they have not told me to oil the pan. Just to Put these on there. So, I 
Smells good. meat rolls on medium heat, then add the teriyaki sauce. So I'm assuming we want to get some like heat, we want to get some browning before we add the teriyaki sauce. It needs to be fried, then we add the teriyaki sauce, then we cook, it, then we cook until the meat becomes glazed with the sauce. So, I mean, I know bacon cooks pretty quickly. I should do. I'll just add that for a minute. Because that bacon grease is going to pop everywhere. So I'm going to let this go for like another 30 seconds. Flip them, let them cook there for another 30 seconds to 60 seconds. To do like a minute on each side. And that should get it, you know, warmed up. Starting to cook, but it's certainly not cooked. we have now. Yep, they're trying to brown. I think this will work. We'll have to find out. Yeah, and boy, does this, I mean, it smells like cooking bacon. And we're cooking <laughs> six, eight slices of bacon. Jeez. Meanwhile, I can move a few things out of the way. Said, move a few things out of the way. Why is that not fitting there anymore? There we are. All right, I'm going to flip these. Yeah. They want to stick, as you might expect. All right. Good. Again, I'll let them go there for another few moments. And then... Toss some of these things into the... Into there while I can. Does teriyaki sauce need to go into the uh, fridge? Or is that shelf stable? Refrigerate it after opening. Okay. Now, I'm going to pour on this sauce. Oh, baby. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some glazed teriyaki bacon here. Oh, that smell is amazing. Cook until the meat becomes glazed with the sauce. Well, we're practically there. I'm going to flip these again. Yeah. They better flip, 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 flip. I get the feeling it's going to nuke the pan, though. I mean, that pan is just going to get this brown sauce on it. I may lower. Uh, cast iron gets real hot. I'm going to pour a bit more of this teriyaki sauce where I can. So, medium for a cast iron skillet might be uh, a little too hot for these, probably. I want to make sure that, that that stuff gets fully cooked. What I'm concerned about is the sides. Like, obviously the top and the bottom are cooked, but not necessarily the sides there. And with the uh, with the toothpicks in, I can't just roll them onto the side of the toothpicks on. So we gotta let that cook. All right, so we'll let that go for a little bit. And they recommend cutting each roll in, oh yeah. You cut each roll in half if you're using the larger pieces, but these would be a good size. Try right, some sriracha sauce. Sounds good. All right, let me flip again. 
Yeah, that's definitely. And then move some of these out so the, the, the middle of the pan is almost always hottest. So I'm going to try to make sure, like this guy, I could probably use some time in there. Over there, and over there. There we go. I wonder. Maybe. I think I can tip the pan and get some of this sauce down here at the bottom. The sauce is also um, probably some of the uh, the fat, the bacon fat. And so can I kind of, no, this is pretty much all fat. That's not really any of the sauce, so I can't really, okay, no, no luck there, fair enough. All right. I need to take another minute or two so we don't kill it, but make sure it's heated all the way through and it'll be good to go. All right. So I'm basically looking to make sure that there's nothing um, still like that light pink of uncooked sausage, uh, bacon, duh, bacon. Like, I think we all know what bacon look, looks like when it's not cooked. Um, the, the, the color and the texture changes and so forth. We just want to make sure we get there. It doesn't need to be completely... It doesn't need to be dark or anything, but ooh, that's, look at that other one. That's a bit too close. Yeah, the, the, the middle of the pan is too hot. A little bit of burning there. Um, I'm going to let that go for another minute or two. I'm just not quite convinced that they're cooked yet. I think a little bit longer, and we should be good to go. Right now we're at about 40% heat. That feels about right for this. Like it's definitely cooking. You can hear that sizzle. Um, but it's not nuking the bottom of those, uh, those, those, that, that bacon. And this is why perhaps a, uh, a non-cast iron pan would be better for this. That cast iron is gonna get so rocket hot. Maybe you'll get kind of a, a uh, you might have an easier time with a different pan. Who knows? All right. Yeah. I think we're good here. Got some uh, some unfortunate stuff down here. I'm actually going to go a little further. One second to to resolve that. We've got some that stuff starting to burn. I'm going to add some oil. And mix that around. And that will uh, basically scrape off, so there's all that black gunk that we can now, well, <laughs> should not go into the trash, or otherwise we're taken care of, but by uh, adding some oil, we break that off at the bottom of the pan. Show you. 
I'm just going to scrape that and that. And there goes all of that stuff. Just scrape it off the bottom of the pan. It's still very hot. So once I cool it down a bit, I can uh, pull it off the pan. All right, let's look at Ikumaki. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Nikomaki glazed. Go ahead and remove the, the toothpicks. They stay together very well. Surprise me. Oh, that one fell apart. Man, look at that. Sign me up. Ooh, this one's, yeah. All right. Who wouldn't want some of that? Huh? Not bad. All right. That's Nikumaki, ladies and gents. That's Nikumaki. Ah, there we go. That's Nikumaki. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And next week we'll move on to another part of Japanese cuisine. Hope you found this useful. And I'll uh, see you next time. See ya.